Hello everybody, good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, closing session of our series of talks, uh, which is organized by Devopedia on the occasion of uh, Engineers Day. Incidentally, today happens to be Engineers Day. So uh, greetings to everybody, all engineers who are on board. So today's topic is uh, semi-technical in nature. It's more of an experience sharing. Um, it's about the life of a freelance tech professional. Uh, what are the challenges? What are the opportunities? What kind of people are suitable for this kind of a journey? So uh, I presume uh, all of us will have some kind of experience in this journey. So we'll share our ideas. So we'll probably have a longer session for a Q&A today instead of just being a monologue. So my name is Anuradha. Welcome to everybody. Yeah, so this is just a brief about myself. So uh, I'm a freelancer, obviously. So uh, I, uh, I wear a plenty of hats. But uh, the two main uh, activities which I can, you know, easily define, easily identify as my skill set are a corporate trainer and as a freelance content writer. So a technical trainer for uh, corporates, companies, primarily startups. I don't do too much of these, uh, you know, Wipro, Infosys, TCS stuff because uh, there is too much of bureaucratic red tape because you have to get approvals and there's a calendar and then you have to confirm and then each project has its own schedules and, you know, there's too much of overhead effort involved. So I try to avoid that uh, category. Uh, my focus is mainly on startups. And of course, these technical institutes and um, online learning certification programs, engineering colleges is another major focus area. And the subjects I cover are uh, totally dynamic. Today it is this, today it is tomorrow it is something else. Uh, I'm totally open to learning a new technology and teaching that because I believe that as senior professionals with experience, our learning curve will be much shorter than, you know, a, a younger person of say two years experience or, or a fresher or somebody. So even if I don't know anything and he doesn't know anything, my learning curve will be so much shorter. My learning will be so much more comprehensive that I can learn quicker and better and teach him. So I, uh, I never say no to a new topic. Then uh, comes, of course, the content writing blogging part. So that is how my association with Devopedia also started. So I, I written a few articles for Devopedia and then I uh, uh, came on board as a trustee of Devopedia. So I do blogging, website content development, technical papers, then competitive analysis reports, all sorts of things, whatever is in uh, the customer client's immediate need. Okay, this is a sh short brief about Devopedia in case there is somebody on the call who is uh, unfamiliar with Devopedia yet. So this is just a, a quick brief. You can explore further at Leisha. So Devopedia is a community tech platform which is dedicated to the IT community. It is free and open to all, no entry barriers. Anybody can come in and start contributing articles in the technology of their choice. Uh, as of now, the statistics stand like this. We have about 300 articles on board, uh, a little more than that. Then we have about um, uh, 97 to 100 uh, active authors and uh, um, 1500 registered users and close to about 2 million article hits. So uh, Devopedia has been active for about three, four years now. And uh, the uh, main activity, of course, has been our uh, blogs, which are uh, um, on a wide ranging uh, uh, set of technology topics. Then, of course, we are also into uh, conducting workshops, um, technical forums and study groups and things like that for uh, enthusiasts. Again, no entry criteria, nothing. You should be good at the technology, interested in the technology, as simple as that. You can be a company guy, you can be a college intern, you can be anybody. Present focus areas have been NLP and machine learning. Uh, probably we'll expand into other areas shortly. And of course, tech talks training sessions like the one you are presently going through. And uh, this is the culminating talk out of a series of 15 talks uh, organized on Engineers Day. So going into the talk itself. So uh, I thought uh, first I'll, talk, I, I'll just do summarize the, uh, uh, the uh, identity of a freelancer. You know, uh, the first challenge that a freelancer faces is Somebody meets you on the roadside and say, what do you do? Aap kya karte hain? So it's very difficult to define what you do. Because if you're working in a company, I'll say, ah, I'm in Wipro, I'm in TCS, I'm in Cisco, problem solved. They won't ask you any question beyond that. They will straight jacket you into a role and then they won't ask you a second question. So there is nothing else to answer beyond that. But when you're a freelancer, what do you say? How do you summarize your uh, role? It's not that you're jobless. It's not that you're sitting at home and doing nothing. You're doing something valuable, but how do you define it? So the key uh, aspect of uh, a freelancer is that you are a one man. You're not a one man startup. Okay, a one man startup is somebody 
uh, who has a burning desire to develop a product of his own he has an obsessive idea that he is following on his own he still doesn't have a team of his a team behind him but he is working for his own product his own service his own idea whereas a freelancer is working to fulfill somebody else's idea somebody else matlab a client the client can be a um, company the client can be a college the client can be a another friend another startup another struggling friend it can be anybody but basically it's not your baby you are trying to support the vision and the uh, ambitions of some other person so you for temporarily at least with your association may be short term your association may be long term you may be doing one client at a time only because the time it is such a time consuming activity or you may be doing short short stints with multiple clients it depends it depends on what skill sets you bring to the table but as long as you are associated with the client you virtually belong to the client's team so you think in terms of the client's welfare think in terms of the client's business uh, focus so you temporarily transport yourself into the client's domain so this is the uh, primary mindset with which a freelancer will approach his work since freelancers typically have more than one skill that they are uh, good with it is very difficult to project your identity in terms of a freelancer what do you say see for example when i said i am a freelancer i have um, highlighted only two skills of mine that is training and content writing but my um, activities and experiences with my clients uh, are uh, a lot more extensive than this there are many times when i have um, i've helped out a brick and mortar company to come on board for the first time to come online for the first time given them a product design idea how to come on board how to set up a website how to create their own app and then um, uh, in other uh, conditions i've had friends of mine who quit you know colleagues of mine from my erstwhile companies they have come on uh, they have their own startup ideas so i've done marketing campaigns for them i've done business plans business proposals then they they have gone for series funding so i've done some um, uh, you know charts financial analysis reports all sorts of things you know so there is really no barrier in what you can do when you are a freelancer as long as it, you like what you are doing and you see value add in that so uh, it's very difficult to define these things when somebody asks you what you do so what you can do is you can try and pick one top priority or two top priority skill sets and try and make that your primary identity so when you define yourself um, maybe in your social media profiles in your resumes preparing a resume for a freelancer is another major challenge what do you put in that so if your skill set is very varied you are a jack of all arts kind of person then you have million things to write about so those kind of people will have probably have to have a very dynamic resume you know like a blog maybe you can um, or a profile online profile which you can keep updating or you use linkedin very actively you would update your uh, activity list there so uh, it depends depends on what skill set you have how how you adapt which uh, medium suits you best i have friends who are um, uh, who are doing very visual activities you know they are illustrators and they make infographics and that kind of stuff videos vlogs that kind of stuff so those kind of people they prefer uh, their uh, uh, displaying their activities on instagram so it really depends on which uh, uh, skill set that you are focusing on and that you can make your primary medium of communication so the idea is simple you first uh, define your uh, focus areas and then you also try to make an identity out of it to define what kind of a freelancing professional you are okay so the next point is what kind of people are suitable to do a freelancing job what kind of people should stay away from being a freelancer it is very clear actually see there are some people who are um, uh, who work well who work diligently only when monitored closely uh this you might have most of you uh, i think most of us will have some kind of corporate background and then only we would have come out to venture on our own so when you have seen your uh, in, during your corporate experience you would have seen there are you know following the bell curve the average middle number of people uh, majority actually the overwhelming majority is very good at following instructions somebody gives you order somebody tells you do this do this do this do it this way do it that way and give it to me by thursday give it to me by friday i'll do it i don't have any problem so a majority of the crowd is in this category such people will struggle when they have a free when they jump over to freelancing because they are not used to being self driven 
they are used to being uh, diligent and hard working and uh, goal oriented only when somebody is watching but a freelancer is basically such a self disciplined person because discipline is basically doing the right thing even when nobody is watching right so you have to be really driven by your own goals and your own motivations only such people are suitable for freelancing careers and inherently freelancing means multitasking you cannot say i will do only my primary job i am an i am a super duper geek uh, developer i will do only do it coding i am very good in java excellent i'll do only that no it doesn't work that way in freelancing you are very good in java very good very nice so you please highlight your experience in that and you go ahead uh, honing your skill but you also have to be a good communicator you also have to be able to understand your customers design customers requirement you must be able to um, exchange ideas you must be able to schedule you must be able to plan your effort you must be able to price your skills what kind of money should you cut should you charge you should be able to put yourself in your customer shoes you should have user orientation there are, you, there are so many skills that come to the table when you become a freelancer that you are a naturally uh, a multitasking kind of a person this kind of person is the most suitable for a freelancing job okay and of course you may also be in a situation where you have to handle multiple clients at a time so one client is doing something another client is having a completely diametrical different uh, domain area focus area you should be able to switch context switch immediately somebody will call you in the morning somebody else will be you will be coding for somebody else in the afternoon somebody else is working in the evening and then in between your family duties so you because primarily freelancers work from home uh, probably we have some exceptions like ram who go and sit in a co working space because he can't do efficient work from home but otherwise most freelancers work from home so when you work from yeah, home yeah. your your cooker is whistling out there your cooking your family is yelling your family is doing a call or a online class on the in the other room so you have to function in this chaos so you it's possible a freelancer has to switch off completely from the external world and you should be able to focus on what you are doing at that moment this is a critical requirement for a freelancer and of course you have to be a very good self learner self learning is a critical requirement for a freelancer because nobody is going to keep telling you learn this learn that uh, define your career graph like this two years later you should see yourself here this should be your ambition no there is no such thing there is no road map for you so it's up to you to choose and uh, uh, it whether you like it or not we are riding a tiger every six months technology changes every six months a new programming language is out a platform is out a tool is out uh, companies are going boom going bust so you have to adapt to these changing quick changing scenarios and you have to be very good very open about picking up a new skill or technology so this is my idea of a personality anybody has differing views anybody no i, I think this was quite nicely captured and rather uh, okay. pretty much yeah I, i kind of agree with all of this okay excellent okay so let's go on to the next part of the story then okay what kind of roles so i am sticking to the scope of being an it freelancer for the time being there are uh, uh, freelancers who are thriving in other areas especially cooking and you know embroidery and you know uh, painting and mural work and glass work and all sorts of things you know candle making name it there are freelancers working in all sorts of non tech domains and they are thriving too but since we are focusing on the it part i have only picked out those roles which are suitable for freelancers in, within the it scope of work product design is a very good area for a freelancer if you are a senior person because you come especially for a person who comes from a corporate background who's been into three companies who's 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 understanding of business is clear but at the same time you don't have the motivation or the guts i would probably bluntly say you don't have the guts or the motivation or the money to venture out on your own you don't want to make your own startup but at the same time you are very good at interpreting a customer's requirement and you know uh, coming out with a product idea or you are good at uh, discussing and coming out with a design so uh, this kind of skill set is badly in need uh, in the industry today especially in the startup ecosystem because in the startup ecosystem what you have you what you don't have in a startup is a middle class you have the upper elite that is the founders who have the brilliant bright idea 
and then you have the minions who are coding or testing or who are doing customer support tech support the fellows with just two years experience so there is a wide gulf in between so when it comes to requirement collection competitor analysis product design then um, um, hld lld or good old things you know this is where startups are floundering so if you are good at this this is an area which is really hot in the market unfortunately it is not clearly carved out okay so this is an area where i would urge middle and senior level freelancers to focus on if you have skill set in this area there is a huge wide gap out there it's just that how we put across this information on our profiles that is the challenge how do we say that i am good at this how do you show your testimonial what kind of design ideas you have contributed in the past so this is a challenge if you can do that there is a huge wide scope and opportunity available here coding of course no questions asked whether you are whether it's a website development or an app or or a, a, as i told you a brick and mortar company which is coming online for the first time there are millions of companies like there especially the sme sector you know you have these um, 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 see though it is a uh, we are talking about the tech space it space ultimately it is only a tool it's only an enabler so whether it is a, a hardware or a um, uh, you know um, sanitary ware company or a uh, tiles company or an electrical components company whoever it is all these fellows have realized that now they have to come online for survival they have no choice so suddenly everybody wants a website suddenly everyone wants everybody wants to develop an app so there is a huge crazy rush for this so if you are good at this kind of stuff this is the place to be especially in bangalore so there are projects available for uh, freelance development you design a development you design a website give it to them or you design an app and give it to them or you do a maintenance for 6 months 3 months or you take up only the tech support customer support work like an amc for a year two years all sorts of combinations are possible then of course one very thriving and successful area of freelancers is training because it is a uh, somewhat decoupled from your main uh, business areas of the company so nowadays a lot of companies prefer to outsource their learning and development function so uh, from preparing the training calendar to uh, then preparing the training material then actually conducting the training evaluation you can do just one part or you can do all the parts it's up to you it depends on your skill set but this is a thriving area the most obvious and the most easy uh, way to enter the tech industry to test the waters is writing yeah I, that i have i have checked out all the other options writing is the easiest way because it has the least entry barrier you can just get on write a blog of your own or you 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 can set up a wordpress account start writing or you have a friend who is having a company you start contributing to the blogs there you write on medium uh, why so so much you write on devopedia we have a rewards program for uh, uh, upcoming authors who are good at tech who want to explore new technologies learn while you earn and uh, housewives students senior citizens anybody who wants to contribute as, as a blogger you are welcome you can do that on the devopedia platform so this is an easy way to enter the freelance world there are other kinds of uh, uh, writing uh, work that is happening outside technical papers white papers competitor analysis reports these are all uh, highly in demand especially you know in companies who are uh, i'll give you an example uh, in companies who are in the engineering domain and who are entering it for the first time this is a huge area of opportunity uh companies like avb schneider siemens you know ge uh, these guys they have engineering expertise they are all huge in their own engineering domains but now they realize that you know uh, they have to enter the cloud space they have to enter the iot space so because they are all allied fields so now they realize that they need to get into uh, some amount of it work so they are looking for it people who can understand their domain understand their product so this is another huge area where there is lot of work involved then within the blog, uh, writing uh, sphere itself there is the work of reviewing and editing this is for slightly senior people uh, where you can contribute as a reviewer or an editor for an already existing article somebody submits articles you review you edit you confirm to the product's uh, scope and uh, vision and then you publish it then as i told you an example of uh, uh, the the new rage in town is uh, creating vlogs so uh, the visual medium exploiting videos uh, maybe you make a slide share you you do a video on youtube or you you make up ad campaign illustrations infographics whatever it is then of course tech support product support and maintenance is another 
uh, area of work that is uh, going to be um, uh, more talked about in the near future because now products and companies are mainly into the uh, getting online for the first time phase because there are a lot of startups who are in the in infant stage slowly when startups start maturing uh, they don't want to have a uh, you know a full time technical support team uh, because that will swell their manpower they want technical support uh, on and off you know like a, a three month schedule six month schedule when it peaks when your when a product is new and you know it is yet to mature that is when your customer support peaks so at that time they want um, uh, help for three months, six months, and then they don't need beyond that. So this kind of activity is just catching up, especially in startups who are the slowly from the infant to the maturing stage. So these are all very apt areas where a freelancer can focus in today's world. Okay, so uh, the rest of the uh, information is basically some quick tips that I have consolidated from my own experience. Of course, I would have left out a lot of points. So we will uh, probably consolidate the uh, opinions of other people as soon as I finish my tips. So today I'm going to finish my talk very early and we'll, we'll leave the floor open and we'll have a lot more interaction as, as much as possible. OK, tip number one. Tip number one is uh, I think I've already covered this, right? OK, yeah. Tip number one, blogging, reviewing, infographics, product support, tech support, maintenance, domain expertise. Domain expertise is one point which I've left out. So if you're a domain expert, say you're an insurance expert, you're from LIC, you have worked in LIC for 20 years. Now suddenly your uh, bank bazaar and your, uh, what is that guy called? Uh, in, uh, who, who, what's the insurance guys called? All these fellows come on the ads now on the TV. All these fellows are recruiting like crazy. Huh? They why so much? Infosys is recruiting so many uh, tech, fintech experts. Why? Because they have this uh, glitch issue with uh, IT uh, website portal. So they are recruiting techies who can understand tax regimes. To, who can understand the IT rules. So this, for testing, application testing and all that stuff. So all sorts of uh, domains are recruiting people who know their domain very well, but at the same time who understand tech. So you may be an automobile guy and then you do a little bit of tech so you can work in the IT, the, uh, you know, the self-driven car space, IoT space. So a uh, retail, so uh, you can help out with a recommendation engine for Amazon. This kind of stuff is all hot in the freelance uh, space. OK, so these are all areas where a domain expert can also contribute as a freelancer. OK, tip number two. Tip number two is all about self learning and development. As I told you earlier, nobody is going to push you and prod you when you are a freelancer to learn something new. At the same time, you cannot say this is my skill set as of today and that's the end of the story. I'm not going to learn anything new. Then you will be obsolete in six months. So uh, for example, I have uh, about 20 years of industry experience. And uh, the last technology that I learned in college was Java. So but after that, there are a million programming languages out there and today every day it is changing. So but and uh, my corporate journey ended quite early. What I did was I, I did about two years of work in TCS and then I was in Huawei as a, a system architect in the telecom domain, telecom web IT domain for about 10, 12 years. So my total corporate experience uh, stopped when I was at um, hardly 31, 32. And the last 10 years, I'm 43 now, and the last 10 years, I've been doing only freelancing. And um, uh, when I quit my job, my corporate job, I was thriving as a corporate person. I, I had a very well paid job. My career graph was very good. And uh, uh, people thought I'm nuts. When I quit my job, uh, including my family, they thought I'm mad. And uh, everybody tried to dissuade me from doing it. But somehow the corporate structure, it it's it stifled me. I couldn't work. I couldn't grow in that setup. I was very successful, but that does not necessarily mean I should like it. So being good at something and liking something are not the same at all. So I decided that, you know, uh, I want to be my own boss. For one month, I want to work like crazy. I'll work like crazy. For the next two weeks, I have some family commitments. I want to switch off. I want to switch off completely. That kind of liberty I wanted and I wanted it badly at the cost of the uh, salary packages that are offered in the IT companies today. They are offering mad kind of salaries in the uh, intermediate experience bracket because there is a dearth of professionals with good corporate knowledge, good, with good, good business knowledge. So people like uh, you know me or Arvind will get a hot plus job tomorrow if we look out for a job. But I don't think we are suited for that kind of a corporate uh, hierarchy any longer because we are too independent minded uh, to probably fit and succeed in that kind of setup now. 
So continuous learning is a challenge if you are a freelancer. So uh, it is also an opportunity, by the way, because if you are in a corporate structure, you are forced to learn whatever is the priority of your company. So whatever is the top focus area vision of your company, you are forced to stay in that space. So if your company is into porting of some old uh, um, software into a new thing, you have to learn. Uh, there was a huge uh, focus on my mainframes in TCS when I was there. It, it was impossible to leave that space had come out. They were doing porting and porting and porting for decades. So you cannot say, no, I don't want that space because that's where you've been recruited. So the freedom to learn new technologies is somewhat curtailed by the business focus of your company. Whereas in, as a freelancer, there is no sky, the sky is the limit. You can learn whatever you want. Today it is this technology, tomorrow it is that technology, whatever takes your fancy. But probably the one constraint that you will meet is cost. Licensing, tools that are available in the market, you cannot purchase every damn thing. Then you cannot uh, uh, probably think of, you know, uh, taking up every uh, high priced course or certification because nobody's going to sponsor you for it. You have to do it yourself. That's not to say information is not available for free. There's plenty of information available for free on the Internet. It's just that you have to have a keen eye for detail. You have to look in the right places. So uh, if any new technology, let's say a client who you are familiar with already, you have done two, three assignments in some some X programming language. Suddenly he says, can you switch to this? Until now he's been doing an Android app. You've done coding in Java. He's very happy with your work. Suddenly he says, hey, I have to also port this into iOS. Can you do Swift for me? He trusts you. So you can tell him openly, I don't know Swift, but I'm ready to learn and do it. So it depends on the trust and the confidence level that you establish with your client. If your client is ready to be, pin your bet, pin his bets on you, excellent. Otherwise, you have to use your lean times and you have to ab ab abreast yourself with the technology because a freelancer's graph is never even. Sometimes you are busy like crazy busy. You 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 are swamped with work. You don't know what to take, what not to take. You are you are forced to reject work because you are too busy. Some other times you are squatting flies. There is nothing coming your way. This is the life of a freelancer. You have to accept it. It's perfectly OK as long as you are mentally accustomed to this. So in the lean phase, make sure that you utilize that space and you use that time productively. Do you uh, work out some code on your own? Maybe contribute to open source projects, answer questions on Quora. You, you can do uh, you can do some um, uh, subscribe to some free open source projects on GitHub or you if you have existing uh, slides or information, you put it up on SlideShare. Go to YouTube, uh, do live sessions, whatever it is, sky is the limit. You can do whatever you want that keeps you motivated, but make sure that you are abreast with whatever is happening in the industry presently and whatever you like. That is the freedom that we have as a freelancer. You're not forced to learn something that you don't like. So you can pick and choose what really motivates you and you can delve deep into that. Another important aspect that I want to highlight is learn from your client's domain area. See, a freelancer is more like a, uh, what can I say? We are, a, we are a tool like a screwdriver or a, or a, ha or a hammer or whatever. You know, uh, we don't really have a domain expertise of our own if you are in the IT space. Today, my IT skills can be used in the fintech domain. Tomorrow, tomorrow it can be used in the healthcare domain. Day after, it can be used in the retail domain. Who knows? We don't know. So, presently, when your come, when your client comes to you with a product idea, try to absorb what he's trying to say. What is his business focus? How is how how is he working? What is the uh, you know interface between him and his uh, his his end user? What kind of equation does he have? What kind of financial viability does he bring to the table? It's very important to understand these things because. Only then you become a well-rounded profession. No knowledge is a waste. I strictly believe in that. Um, uh, you, uh, if you're a free, in fact, if you ask me if you're a good engineer, you should be able to solve in engineering is basically applying uh, applying principles, right? Applying your knowledge. So it's a sense of application. Today uh, you have a broken sink tap. You have to become a good plumber. Get down and do the work yourself. That is the definition of a good engineer. So no knowledge is a waste. Never think of, you know, dignity of labor. I'm doing too much of boring work. I'm doing too much of I, I want to do only high priority work. I want to do only high tech work. It's not like that. You should be ready to do all kinds of work. So following with up a customer, client continuously or, you know, making calls to get your payment dues. This is all very boring work. This is all considered overhead. But yes, you have to do it. You have to do it diligently. 
keeping your office space clean this is your own problem nobody your no, no janitor will come and clean your office space you have to do it yourself so basically you are you have to do every damn thing associated with yourself all by yourself so there is no dignity of labor here you do everything yourself and enjoy what you do non critical skills are non technical skills are critical for a freelancer communication uh, uh, their understanding your customer uh, time management effort estimation then uh, finance these are all very 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 soft skills these are all very important skills for a freelancer because you have nobody to handhold you nobody to cushion you uh, outside in an organization you have to do it yourself okay tip number 3 is about money so money is a critical and um, uh, tricky part of freelancing uh, ma managing money uh, one thing i should straight away come out and admit you cannot expect to earn the kind of money that you earn in a corporate regular corporate thriving job as a freelancer maybe only 10% of the freelancers earn that kind of money 90% of the freelancers make okay okay money so if money is your top priority as in your career advancement please don't look at freelancing as the best option if you are driven by passion primarily and money will come along the way as a side product then it's okay but if you have huge money goals you have a mortgage you have school kid kids school huge liabilities this that you have a emi huge liabilities on you burdens then think twice before you quit your corporate job and take me up as a freelancer because there is no guaranteed income here today you might get lot of money the next two months the startup will go kaput and you have nothing you never know what happens next so if you are ready for the ups and downs then only this freelancing is for you so in the money management first aspect is how to price your effort so it's very difficult so uh, the first thing the client will ask you is okay this is your skill set okay this you will do for me you will do this training okay how much will you charge so how do you answer this question there is no one answer fits all formula here uh, you can have some ballparks for example if you are a writer you can say i charge maybe you know 2 uh, 2 rupees per word that means what if you write 500 words you get 1000 rupees this is just a ballpark that does not mean everywhere you write you write you charge the same amount of money sometimes you'll be writing for free sometimes you'll be you'll be charging a lot more because it also involves on how much of research effort you are putting in how much of uh, you know extra information you are putting in uh, like for example statistics you have to co collect or maybe you have to analyze some reports analyze your competitors understand your business domain for the first time so many new things so many dimensions that you have to think about so in those kind of situations it also depends on the effort you put in so you can price your um, uh, do your pricing on two three aspects one on the hours spent so there are freelancers who only charge based on time you know so if you are putting in 8 hours 10 hours you charge on that or if you are doing a week wise month wise calendar this whole month i am pledging my effort to you okay you you pay me for 20000 bucks i'll work for you 3 hours a week this whole month so these kind of formulas are very popular among the freelancing space or you say okay i'll develop a app ios app for you in 2 months and you pay me 50000 rupees this is also okay based on a deliverable so it depends on what skill set you bring to the table and how you want to price it so there is no one perfect formula but these are all the popular models that are out there and what do i use i use a mix of all this the next point i wanted to explain was about the taxation part which is a little tricky for a freelancer uh when you are uh, working for a repeat customer that is the same customer is paying you on um, uh, assignments uh, over a period of the uh, entire financial year if that income crosses 30000 rupees from one particular customer he is supposed to deduct uh, tds from you so presently the rate of tds is 7.5% so if your um, uh, income due is say 20000 he will deduct 7.5% with 1500 rupees and then only pay you if you are earning within the 5 lakhs bracket then you can get this back as an it refund so you file your it returns and you get it back as a refund if you are earning more than that you pay you pay the tax according to that particular tax bracket so sometimes what happens the tds is very less and probably you have other income and all that and then you may be in the 30% tax bracket then in that case what you have to do you have to go and pay uh, self assessment tax uh, advance tax whatever it is whatever is applicable so these things are important to understand yes you may have an auditor to support you but i believe in doing my uh, finance work myself so uh, these are things i handle on my own so if you are if you happen to file your own tax returns then you have to use itr3 not the itr1 
because you have to declare income under business and profession. OK, so the, there's a lot more information on that. We if somebody is interested, I can share offline, but uh, that is an area of focus we should which every freelancer should remember. OK, then uh, one important aspect that I want to uh, stress here is uh, don't try to measure everything that you do in terms of money. Sometimes you do things for free and it gives you a lot more satisfaction. Why satisfaction? It might bring you a lot more work in the future because a piece of good work is the best, best advertisement that you can do of your own work. So let's say you do a training for free. OK, uh, I'll give you an example. I do a lot of college training for free. OK, because uh, first of all, I do it for my own college because I'm an alma, I'm an alma mater. So the kind of goodwill that you earn there is unparalleled. OK, the students are benefiting. They're happy with you. They say I learned a lot from you. That kind of satisfaction no amount of money can bring. Then uh, work at Devopedia itself. You take Arvind's example. Uh, what kind of money is he making? Nothing. Devopedia is his passion. That's all. So the kind of satisfaction that it brings, he, he can never measure in terms of money. So this is uh, a non-monetary benefit of working as a freelancer. But the monetary part, if you can do a first few, say for a client, for example, you have you're, you're, you're found a new client for the first time, maybe a friend has recommended and he wants to know if you can do a good job or maybe it's a struggling startup. He can't pay you right away. He says, hey, I'll pay you. Yes, surely I assure you I'll pay you, but I'll pay you after three months. It's OK. You can do it. If you can afford it, please give it. If you yourself have financial constraints, that's a different story. But if you can afford it, please do it. Support them in their struggling years. Finally, when they are doing well, you will automatically gain from their success. One boring part of a freelancer's job is following up on payments because when you are uh, working as a freelancer, it's very uh, it, uh, the work, as long as the work part is uh, happening, the communication with the company will be very hard and fast. It will be very quick, very quick, very responsive. But when the work is over, the client will suddenly switch off. It happens very often when the payment part of the deal comes. They because for them, the main job is over. Payment is a you know, it's a ho jayega, baad mein ho jayega kind of attitude they will work with. So it is a low priority activity for them. So in that case, it's not uh, it's not something. Uh, it's not a matter of shame to follow up on your uh, payments. OK, do it. Do it diligently. Be deal. Send a reminder. Talk to them. It's not an ego issue here saying, hey, why should I beg? It's not begging. It's OK. You've done your work. You are asking for your uh, due. So it's perfectly OK. So here you have to work um, dispassionately. So this is an important aspect. You must follow up on your payments diligently. There are uh, a new crop of activities that are happening in the startup space that is uh, overseas clients. So there are people uh, whether you may be doing a training program for a, um, a company which is uh, situated in the US and they are willing to pay you in dollars. So how do you do? You set up a PayPal account and you work with all the you have a um, NRI account in some bank. You have a set up a PayPal account. You do the conversion. You have to pay taxes according to that. All that circus you have to be ready. But there is a tried and tested route available for this. People are doing it. Then comes uh, invoicing, which is another important aspect. Uh, there should be a physical record of the services rendered. So every time you render a service, whether it is a blog or a training schedule or a programming assignment, whatever you have developed an app or you have done tech support, whatever it is you have done, please have a template for the invoicing. Either template should have your name, address for communication, contact details, PAN number, banking details and the services rendered. What work you have done? Uh, in measurable terms, the, the dates of submission, what is the uh, uh, charge payment rates and by when do you expect the payment to happen? So this information should be along with the signature and date. So this kind of information you should make as a template and keep and you should be able to send it to your customer as soon as the deliverable is over from your side. Let me go to the next topic that is work ethics. Now this is a, a non measurable kind of activity, but it is uh, for a freelancer to survive on the long term. It is easy to get new work as a freelancer. It is easy to gain work, but it is very, very difficult to sustain your good name, sustain a reputation as a freelancer because with that, that comes only with good work ethics. OK, so the first thing that you do is 
never over commit and under deliver never do that be modest in your commitment and do your do a good job beyond the customer's expectation that is when they will be pleasantly surprised and come back to you just because you are over ambitious and you you badly want to get that customer desperately you you promise the moon you say i'll do this i'll do that i'll do it in 3 days i'll do this and finally you don't deliver you are creating a back mark on your own profile so please don't do it be modest be as uh, uh, low key as possible when you start but deliver more than what you promise and then after you deliver your work will speak for itself and there is uh, also another aspect of modesty when you uh, you know uh, declare what you have done when you publicize your work it's probably not very sensible if you are very modest if you have done good job you say you have done a good job if your customer has appreciated you you go on linkedin and say boss xyz customer appreciated me or he gave me a, uh, he gave me an incentive because i did it early or he gave me a, he gives me a recommendation on linkedin whatever it is there is no space, there is no need to be modest out here what you have done what you learned it's okay to say it out loud because that is your only testimonial right you don't have a you don't have a company backing you don't have anybody else proving what you are worth so you have to do it yourself an important aspect of freelancing is plagiarism this is something that that is really troubling the freelancing industry you know especially when you are doing training and blogging and that kind of stuff even code there is a lot of theft that is happening out there you know it is not theft of uh, just theft of a deliverable it's theft of an idea also so uh, uh, please don't do this it's it's it, it's unhealthy and it is only detrimental in the long run especially when it comes to blogging and content writing it is so easy to copy paste from an existing blog there is a uh, it is inevitable that everybody will do their research on the internet i also do my research on the internet whatever is publicly av- available information whatever whether it is a pdf or a youtube video or whatever it is that you go through you learn from it and you imbibe into it and then you present it in your own way present your understanding that's the only value add that you bring to the table if you are simply copy pasting somebody's work then for, if a client is naive for the first time he will believe your work and he'll take it up but in the long run it will hit you bad so you cannot sustain in the industry on the long run if you resort to this kind of uh, uh, work ethic be as original as possible and if you have taken references from a source please cite your source clearly in your work so you can say reference image courtesy or video courtesy or some blog courtesy or data statistics or some report has been taken from this website quote your source simple okay then another aspect is time sharing uh, if you are working on multiple product projects at a time be very careful with your time sharing uh, if your customer is uh, expecting a non disclosure if you are working for two competitors at the same time these are all tricky aspects to be very careful about especially competitors working at the same time if you are working for two competitors at the same time please publicly declare this information to both the companies get their consent because tomorrow if they come to know it will be in very bad light so don't do it but at the same time there is no rule preventing you from doing it but as long as you can openly declare your information to them there is no problem setting and meeting commitments as i was saying in the beginning whatever you promise please deliver don't over promise and under deliver okay meeting your commitments is critical maintain confidentiality of data so uh, some customers insist on an nda a non disclosure agreement it's perfectly okay to sign it but read it carefully because some people they have all sorts of crazy clauses in them saying indemnity if i find this i'll do this i'll sue you i'll do this i'll do this i'll not pay you all sorts of crazy things they write so never sign an nda without reading it carefully make sure your part of the bargain is clearly represented and then only sign it signing nowadays simply means signing on pdf so you can do an e sign and end of story if you ask me is it um, uh, really implementable in a court of law the truth is no it is not okay because if you simply sign on a pdf document anybody can copy paste my signature from any document right you might have xerox something and somebody even the xerox shop will have my signature in a kyc document we sign everywhere all sorts of papers will have signatures so easy to take a snap cut that part and uh, log it uh, load it into a pdf file anybody can do it so technically speaking it is not legally enforceable but it's only a procedural thing but most companies who insist on an nda expect you to e sign it so you can do it no problem okay this is just a 
small record that I wanted to show. This is an example that I have. Um, uh, of course, it depends on the nature of work that you have. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, master record that I, I keep for all the blocks that I write. Okay. At the same time, I have a similar master record for the trainings that I conduct for the website that I support. So for different activities, I have a different different master record with a different template. I diligently update this record even if I don't get paid for an activity, even if it is free honorary work, I come and write it here. It's OK. You must put it in. So what are the? Uh, this is my uh, master record for my blogging. I've, I've deleted the actual information. I just put sample data. So this is uh, uh, which company are you writing for? What is the article title? What is the URL published URL link? So why it is important is because tomorrow a new client will come and say, Acha, I want some uh, blogs in the IoT space. Have you done any blogging in IoT? Then you don't have to go and sit and search uh, your entire email history on what all kinds of blogs you have written for IoT. In one place, you have all your blog links. You just copy paste and say, boss, this is my profile for this space. Then you yeah, send them a uh, you know, sample of your testimonial work. So in one place, you have all the data. When did you submit? And you can even highlight all the activities that are presently in progress. You know, so in when it is in progress, the date of submission will be empty. So the moment you see something is empty, that means oh, this work is in progress. I have to finish. When it is published and when you got your payment. So yeah, uh, a record is closed only when all the three dates are filled in. So submission is over, publishing is over, payment is over. That means that activity is over, closed. Then you can come to the next activity. Like this, you can keep if your information on monthly wise, year wise, whatever it is, how much ever is the load that you take up, it depends on that. Even if it is payment some zero, please put it in. Keep everything, keep record of everything. OK, so the, I've just given an example for writing. Similarly, I have another Excel sheet for training and for other miscellaneous activities. It's a different different format. So when a new customer comes, I just come to the sheet quickly pick up or suddenly I'm, I'm out of work for one week and then I come back and like, oh, what is the pending work for me? What is currently in progress? I may have forgotten. Sometimes you completely forget. You come here and you see what are all the activities are in progress and you quickly finish that. So this has really helped me manage my work. So I thought I'll just share this information with you. Of course, this is my template. You have to make your own template which suits you. I'm done with my story. Now I leave the floor open. Let's all share our experiences and see what we have to say. People, People can, can unmute themselves, themselves and, uh, and uh, ask questions. Ask questions. Uh, hi, Anuradha. This is Pankaj here. Hi, Pankaj. Hey, thanks for sharing the best practices and tips. Uh, and uh, yeah, all uh, it was very interesting and very useful. I wish I could have had such session like four years back when I started <laughs> freelancing. <laughs> and I agree like uh, fully with you with the part that uh, never over commit and under deliver. The reverse yeah. is uh, always. Uh, uh, adds to uh, basically reverse will add starts and uh, uh, if you do this over commit and under deliver uh, nobody cares whether it was over commitment or under commitment people will say you have not delivered so you are not uh, like it will be a negative remark for you that's a, really? it's a dislike and we cannot give these excuses like you know my kid felt sick and i had to go away or something all those excuses no Nobody will listen from a freelancer. You can give it in the corporate structure because they know you as an individual. So there is a personal rapport there. Here you can't give all that. This situation will be ruthless because it's a very impersonal relationship. They don't know you as a person. Yeah. As far as they're concerned, you are an anonymous resource. Correct. So you yeah, I your personal constraints to them. You deliver, you deliver. Simple. As you say, like I will contact you uh, in person for the ITR and file. For, for <laughs> <laughs> surely, surely. I, I'm incidentally I'm good at finance, so that is okay, the reason okay. why uh, you know I don't have an auditor. I can do it myself. Okay, great. This is Arvind here. What is your opinion on online sites? There, there is, there are some sites where you can uh, put out your skills and uh, bid yes. for work. Yes, yes. 
uh, these see uh, there are these popular ones from the us no this uh, what is it called uh, fiber and uh, what is it called um, angels list and some two three are there from the us okay up, up work as well quite yeah popular. all those fellows are there uh, personally i have never tried any of those things there are two reasons for that one it so happens i have never had to look for work from an external source somehow by here say by some friend or some source or you do good work somewhere and they will come back to you i have never had to do active marketing of my work so, but i may be an exceptional case so uh, i have never had to go to these um, you know impersonal websites and look for work there are two websites in india which i have done work for uh, um, they are popular in the blogging space and of course a training also there was one company called tap chief it was based in bangalore and of course now they have been purchased by yuna academy which is a uh, uh, online learning portal so they do learning and development work for others uh, then, then you have this um, uh, another website called pepper content these fellows are uh, for uh, they are outsourcers for blogging okay so when you do uh, uh, there are websites upcoming startups like this who are doing the intermediary work the mediators work they bridging the gap between a freelancer and a um, client but there are very few of them in india these are one or two that i have come across and there are these uh, learning institutes you know they use lot of um, freelancers for example you must have seen this um, uh, great learning and who is that fellow uh, yuna academy edureka all these fellows you know they use a lot of freelancers i have done lot of training for these fellows so these people they don't have permanent uh, trainers and all that they simply pick and choose uh, based on the skill set whichever is hot in the market today they will go scout on linkedin or they will contact somebody some companies some info and or some known person and they they come and they check with you or if you have a good linkedin profile uh, of uh, information that you obtain trainings that you have already conducted they scout actively on linkedin so from what i see uh, pushing your work on linkedin and uh, you know uh, expecting them to get in touch with you this is what has worked for me i have not actively gone and advertised my um, skill set anywhere and said i am looking for work but i may be an exceptional case so my knowledge in that area is little less there may be other people who have re uh, re registered their um, uh, profiles in these websites but i have done very less of this i have not i have i haven't needed to thanks you anybody else uh, i think this was a very nice talk anuradha and you really summarized quite beautifully uh, and quite concisely all the points that one should i guess be aware of right thank you thank you <laughs> yes <laughs> thanks thank you so if uh, if you if you if you hit upon some query a little later and you want to catch up with me offline you're welcome to do so you can get me get in touch with me on this email id